Hello Geeks and Gamers, Matt Lemke here with your Gamer Goggles and this is uh, Matt Speaks RPGs which is going to change real soon its name, I don't like that name at all uh, and we're talking about the role of character again today we're going to go over races but first I'm going to apologize because apparently last week when I uploaded it to YouTube something happened to the audio file and it started to loop uh, after about three minutes so we're going back and I'm refilming it because I don't have the original anymore and it actually, I guess it didn't happen when it uploaded, it happened when I made it from my raw file to my viewable file for YouTube. Um, anyway, we're going to talk about races, and the races are just the core races. Next week we're going to look forward to talking about um, half races, or as they're putting uh, Pathfinder, the bastard races. And when I say that, well, we'll get into definition next week. But anyway... Today isn't going to be an all-inclusive thing that just covers everything. There's no; These are not simple rules that I say you have to do. These are more like ideas and suggestions based off things that I think are often overlooked or that I, I think could easily be incorporated that we as role players tend to miss or um, because we've read so much literature or because we have so much experience we just assume things are there and accounted for uh, when they're not necessarily are for example a dwarf is a stocky individual that's about five feet tall many of us are at least that tall so it would be very easy for us to overlook things that are involved in the dwarf's life especially things that come into play with their physical structure or, the, you know, their stature, um, you know, dwarves are stonemasons, they're all these things that revolve around being in mines. But what we tend to overlook are things like, what or how would living in a mine affect us? A mine is uh, a dark place, even though the dwarves always like them in literature. I don't know why. Dwarves have dark vision, and they can see in the dark. So you could say that dwarves are a symbol of light in darkness, if you wanted to argue that. Uh, but going even deeper, um, dwarves tend to be slow to make friends in, in our literatures. Uh, so the question is, how and why does that evolve? Well, you could say it's because just they have a longer life than humans, so it takes them longer to get to know each other. I think that's kind of a cop-out. I think basically it's not that it takes longer. I mean, it does take longer, but the truth is I think their version of friendship is different than that of what a human could do. Um, a dwarvish and even an elvish friendship is probably a lot more like marriage in the sense that you have a lot more time to get to know those people around you. Therefore, your understanding and your relationship with them is deeper. Uh, how do you make that happen in role playing? Well, gosh, I mean, you know, a human fighter meets a, a dwarven cleric and they go on an adventure. There's a lot of time there for a lot of barriers to be torn down. Um, initially, there might be some distrust or not so much miscommunication on what friendship is. Uh, but the other thing to think about, too, is where do dwarves live? They live in mines, they live in caves. Uh, generally, they're cold and they're damp. Uh, they smell musty. So what is a dwarf going to be like in an open field where there's flowers? It's going to be a totally new experience to them that's, that's foreign. Uh, will they have hay fever? Will they sneeze? You know, I mean, those are just simple things. Uh, but, you know, the whole idea of even living in a cave, though, they, they have to carve out everything they want. So... Aside from these great halls that dwarves made for their, their clan, their actual living quarters and things are probably quite small. So you can imagine the extended families that live together in the United States or even in you know other parts of the world, other countries, where you've got great-grandparents, greater-greater-grandparents greater and um, cousins and nephews all living together in the same area. So, you know, you, you really do get this community bond. Um, from being a dwarf. Uh, the other thing that I think is something that 
could very easily be overlooked is taking into account things like, well, maybe your DM throws the dwarf in solitary confinement or you guys get thrown into a small cell. That's probably not that bad for a dwarf because they live underground. They live in probably tighter quarters than, you know, people that are above ground and have more space that they don't have to carve out. Uh, and uh, things like that. This is That's kind of where I'm going with this. Now, elves, they live a lot longer than uh, dwarves and every other race that there is, pretty much, of the core races, and even the basic race, you know, the basic half races. Uh, so, their understanding of philosophies and uh, the difference between right and wrong, things like that, are probably going to be more extreme. They would have a clearer understanding of where to draw the line in what is right and wrong. Uh, I... I'm not wise enough to come up with a good example, but there are tons of stories uh, about things that you can use as examples. Uh, I think that elves will definitely be truer to the essence of an alignment than uh, other races would be. I think you could certainly say that a lawful good character or a lawful good paladin that's an elf would be different than a lawful good paladin of any other race. Plus, you know, friendship. Uh, they live so much longer, they spend so much time, you know, grooming each other. And, and when I say grooming, I'm not talking about hair and things like that. I'm talking about educating each other. Their society is probably tight knit. Um, might not be classroom style, but. It might be something where the older students are teaching the younger students, um, things like that. There's, again, there's no set rules to this. Uh, but, you know, elves are often seen as being arrogant and condescending. And I think that goes back to what I was talking about with alignment. It's not so much that they're arrogant or condescending. It's that they're shorter with their definition of things and their patience uh, because their understanding is so much fuller. You know, and that's those things are often reflected in the way they view arts and crafts. Um, you know, certain skills they, they desire to be perfect and you know perfect things. Uh, and then we're going to move into gnomes. Gnomes are short little creatures, often depicted as being alchemists, uh, tinkerers. So they're artificers. Um, I didn't know this before researching this, but they're they're viewed as being hyperactive people, so they're kind of like squirrels on crack. Um, and, well, I think the one thing that is often underplayed is their height. I mean, this table's 30 inches. Most halflings and gnomes are about the height of this table. So you're talking... Oh, well, actually... They would probably be a little bit taller than me if they were standing on the table. So, when is the last time that you, as a human being, had to climb up something to sit down? In most normal circumstances when we're gaming, gnomes and halflings probably have to do just that. Um, could you imagine? Uh, just close your eyes for a second and put a piano bench in front of you. And imagine what would happen if a gnome or a halfling tried to get on it from being in the middle without a stepping stool or without jumping. Or even if they did jump, odds are they're going to knock the stool over onto themselves because there's no stairs. Or here, here's a great example. Um, you walk into a room, your DM butters off the contents of the room and some stuff, and he, he mentions something that's up here. He mentions the Pathfinder role-playing beginner box. And you go, oh, I want that. So I grab it. And everybody in the party overlooks the idea, which is probably okay because they're going to be like, well, yeah, okay, he's going to do that. And we're just going to say that it takes you however long to do that. But then on your next action, instead of saying you get a chair or something to get up there to grab it, you say you grab the ruby off the table. That if it's in the middle of the table, there's a good chance you might not be able to see it until you get up on that stool. So those are things that um, they can hinder you as a player, but they can make the game so much more fun and rewarding if you can put yourself into that mindset of being the actor that is that uh, short. Um, 
Guardians of the Galaxy actually kind of comes to my mind. Uh, Vin Diesel, who is a... I don't know if he still is, but at one point in time was certainly a Dungeons and Dragons nut. Uh, he uh, had all kinds of videos all over Facebook and things where he had these... these uh, I don't even know what they're called. They're like... They're like half wheels for for walking on, and and they make him taller. You know, he was he was working on his role, um, and so he was actually he actually created being taller. Or well, the movie said created him being taller so that he could get into the frame of mind. And that, as role players, I think is one of our ultimate goals is to get into the mind of that character we created, so that that character can come to life. Uh, you know, halflings, they're kind of a funny part of uh, role-playing to me anymore because if you read the descriptions from the D&D &D books and the Pathfinder books, they tend to be the real nice, kind people um, that like the comforts of home and the simple things. Not so much, oh, that's a real nice gold necklace or that's a nice wool shirt well, maybe the wool shirt. The wool shirt would probably work. But they're the type of individual that in a dungeon, when it's time to rest, would make everybody tea. Or they would maybe try and make everybody a meal. Or, you know, you, they walk into a room and there's this big treasure chest and they see this wool blanket that's got something that reminds them of home on it. And they take the wool blanket instead of any of the treasure. Yet, yet, a lot of our fantasy literature puts uh, halflings in the role of being a rogue or a thief. Yet, they're most likely, and maybe they're the most, maybe they're also the most unlikely. They're the most likely to stab you in the back because they're doing something so nice to you in the front, right? I don't know. Uh, but again, halflings have the same problem that gnomes have, and they're short! Uh, you know, they're a little bit stockier, um, and things like that, but, you know, being short isn't necessarily a disadvantage. It can be an advantage. Uh, when's the last time that you and another short person darted in and out of legs with a rope? <laughs> yes, with a rope. Um, so, well, going on too much of a rambling, uh, again, I'm not a psychologist. These are just things that I would like you to kind of think about when you're role-playing, because I know that they have helped me. Uh, and you can spend a lot more time if you read literature, you know, the, the traditional Dungeons & Dragons books and the Pathfinder books, and try, you, they, they help describe scenes. For example, well, you know, most of us have seen Lord of the Rings. So, when Gandalf walks into the Hobbit hole, um, he bangs his head. So, you know, again, it can be an advantage to being short. Um, just don't let your DM see this because you might find yourself in a halfling habitat <laughs> for your next dungeon. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, I, I, I have rambled enough, I think. Uh, next week, we're going to move along, and we're going to get into the half races, uh, which, as I said before, Pathfinder is dubbed the Bastard Races. And when they say Bastard Races, they're not meaning anything bad about it. They're basically meaning any, any race that doesn't fit in. So next week's approach is going to be a little bit different than this week's approach. We're probably not going to go half orc, half elf. We're probably going to talk about what it means to be unaccepted uh, with some possible examples from the races that currently exist. So uh, please leave comments, questions, concerns. Um, I, I like where this is going. People are starting to come out of the woodwork and say they enjoy it and things like that. And for those of you that already have, I thank you. Uh, I will have a written article up on this soon that is parallel to this, a little bit more in depth with my thoughts and they're a little bit more, more coherent. So thanks for watching. Have a good day and I'll see you. Uh, actually, I will see you later this week since this is a refilming. Have a good day.
Oh, watch for our Kickstarter. It'll be coming soon. I'm thinking February 1st. Take care.